Hey! The Take Until Destroyed operator, introduced in Angular version 16, automatically unsubscribes from an observable when its component or service is destroyed. This prevents the need to manually unsubscribe. Let's take a look. The number one rule of subscriptions, if you subscribe, be sure to unsubscribe. This prevents memory leaks where subscriptions could continue to emit after a component or service is destroyed. But manually unsubscribing isn't always an easy task, especially if you have lots of subscriptions. Often, we work with the observables returned from an HTTP GET operation. These operations are one and done. They emit once and complete. But it is still possible for the user to request some data, then leave the feature before that data is returned, causing a leak. To more readily see a memory leak in action, let's use an observable that emits continuously, like interval. I'm in StackBlitz. Here is the main component. When the user clicks the Start button, the Child component appears. When the user clicks the Stop button, the IF block removes the Child component from the DOM and destroys it. In the Child Detail component, we have an observable that emits every second. We use the oninit lifecycle hook to subscribe and start the interval emissions. Here in the template, we display the tick. Let's start it. And we see the tick. Stop it. And start it again. And we see the tick again. Click Stop, and it stops again. Looks OK. So what's the problem? Notice that we are logging the tick here. Let's open the preview window in another tab. I'll connect to the project and rearrange the windows. Then open the browser console. We'll again start the interval. We see the tick here and in the console. Then stop the interval. Notice that the tick still appears in the console. Let's click Start again and we get another observable. Notice that we now have two ticks displayed in the console. Click Stop and we still see those ticks. Let's close the console for now. Even though we've destroyed this child component, the observable is still running. One way to fix this is to manually unsubscribe using the onDestroy lifecycle hook. In the ng-onDestroy method, we add an unsubscribe. Let's see if that fixes the problem. Open the browser console, click Start, and we see the tick here and in the console. Click Stop, and the tick stops. Click Start again, and we only have one observable emitting tick values. We are successfully unsubscribing from the observable when the child component is destroyed. But this code could get laborious and messy if we have to manage multiple observables. Is there a better way? Instead of manually unsubscribing, we can use the Take Until Destroyed operator to simplify this code. First, we add a pipeline to the interval observable. Then in the pipeline, we insert the Take Until Destroyed operator. And we need to import it. This operator isn't a native RxJS operator. Instead, it's in at angular slash core slash RxJS dash interop. With this operator in place, we no longer need the manual unsubscribe, nor the ng on destroy, nor the on destroy lifecycle hook. Plus, we really don't need the subscription variable here or here. And we can remove the unnecessary imports. Sweet! Let's give it a try. Click Start, and it doesn't work. We see an error. Take until destroyed can only be used within an injection context, such as a constructor, a factory function, a field initializer, or a function used with run in injection context. What does that all mean? And most importantly, how do we fix it? The take until destroyed operator needs to be aware of when the injection context of its component or service is about to be destroyed. That's when it knows to unsubscribe. This error message is telling us that to be aware of the injection context, take until destroyed needs to be used within that injection context. Think of the injection context as the code that runs during construction where we can inject services. 
I covered the injection context in detail in the video linked above and in this video's notes. So how do we fix our take until destroyed? One option is to move the code that uses take until destroyed to an injection context. The injection context is available here where we initialize our class level fields and in the constructor, which we aren't using here. Within the injection context, the take until destroyed operator knows when the component is about to be destroyed so it can unsubscribe from our observable. We'll move our observable out of the ng-on-init method and instead assign it to an observable variable. Class level fields are executed on construction, so are within the injection context. Then in the ng-on-init, we'll subscribe to that observable. Trying it again, click Start to start the tick. We see the tick here and in the console. Click Stop and our interval stops. Start again, and we only see one tick logged to the console. It works! Alternatively, we can inject destroy ref, then pass it into take until destroyed. Destroy ref, new in Angular 16, notifies take until destroyed right before the component or service is destroyed, so it can unsubscribe. Let's undo the changes we just made and try the approach using destroy ref. We start by injecting destroy ref and assign the reference to a class level variable. I'll use the quick fix to add the needed imports. And notice that we're injecting it within the injection context. Next, we pass that destroy ref reference into take until destroyed. That's it. Trying our example again, click start to start the tick. We see it here and in the console. Click stop and our interval stops. Start again, and we only see one tick logged to the console. This technique works as well. There is one more caveat when working with the take until destroyed operator, order of pipeline operations. Let's look at a more complex example. I'll add a second tick to the template, then paste the component code, and add the imports for subject, and switch map. In this code, I defined a subject and declared a variable referencing its observable. When that observable emits, the switch map starts a second interval. In the ng on init, we'll kick off the second interval by emitting into the subject. Where should we put the take until destroyed in this pipeline? Let's try it as the first operator. Click Start, and notice that both ticks display on the page and are logged to the console. Click Stop, and the first tick stops, but not the second tick from the switch map. And if we click Start again, we now have two second ticks. Why is that? With Take Until Destroyed, the order of operations matters. Operators such as Share Replay, Take Until, and Take Until Destroyed work on the operators above it in the pipeline. So teardown logic is only applied to the operators above the take until destroyed operator. Let's fix this by moving take until destroyed below the switch map. Click start and we again see the ticks appear on the page and in the console. Click stop and they both stop. Excellent. However, take until destroyed cannot always be the last operator either. Some operators, such as toArray and count, don't execute until the source completes. These types of operators must be used after the take until destroyed. Let's try the count operator. I'll add it after take until destroyed and add the needed import. With the count operator, this observable will only emit once when the stream completes and it emits the tick count. Click start and we see the tick on the page and in the console. The second tick remains at its initial value of zero. Click Stop, and our second tick emits the count into the console. That works! If we move the count operator above the take until destroyed and try again, click Start, let it run for a few seconds, then click Stop, the second tick never appears. The count operator is torn down before it has a chance to emit. Bottom line, 
Pay attention to where you put take until destroyed in the pipeline. It should be after the operators it tears down and before any operators that execute when the source completes. So, use take until destroyed anytime you want to ensure a subscription is unsubscribed when the component or service is destroyed. But why are we talking about ways to unsubscribe when we could use the async pipe or two signal to automatically subscribe and unsubscribe? I'll leave that question for a separate video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.